guys, what's going on? It is Asher coming at you today talking about the problem with bowlers. So bowlers have been the troop on everybody's mind. Before I get into that, let me first apologize for not coming out with two videos a day the last day or two. I've been through a lot. My poor little dog, Sheldon, everybody meet Sheldon. Uh, he's really the love of my life. I, I never thought I'd be one of those dog owners to, uh, to really have that kind of a bond, almost like a father-son bond with their dog, but I certainly do with little Sheldon. He's a manly chocolate toy poodle but he ate something very toxic last night and I spent the entire night at the vet so wasn't able to come out with two videos but anyway back to the subject at hand Today, I want to talk a little bit about the problem with bowlers. Now, I know some of you right now are doing a collective eye roll. Another YouTuber out there having a problem with a troop that most of us haven't even maxed out yet, and he's gonna call for a nerf, and Supercell's gonna nerf the troop as soon as I get it maxed out. Greedy Supercell, right? No, to the contrary, I'm actually not calling for a bowler nerf today in today's video. However, I do want to bring up a problem that I have with the bowler attacks. So bowler attacks have absolutely taken over the game, both at Town Hall 10 now we're starting to see them, and certainly at Town Hall 11, I'm going to follow this replay up with a 3-star using level 1 bowlers against a 100% maxed out base. I actually shared it previously, but it warrants a re-examination because of how much of a strong attack it is. So let's rewind a little bit before we get to the crux of my argument. So there's really two camps of players out there. There's the more super competitive players who, you know, maybe gem the updates or farm them really hardcore right when they come out. They're usually maxed out. And this group primarily doesn't like bowlers. I say primarily and there are plenty of exceptions. But the reason being is because this group of players, they like intricate planned two or three phase attacks with kill squads, etc 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 right and then the other camp of people are uh, tend to be a little bit more casual or folks who don't play super often they don't gem they don't max out their troops as soon as they come out maybe they're even town hall eight or nine and they're just anticipating someday being a maxed out player so there's two camps of people the second camp they generally like having more three star options for the layman, people who don't have time to plan for five or six hours or use burner accounts for five or six hours to crack a base like having an option that they can go in, attack the base, and have a decent shot if all goes well at three stars. So those are the two camps of players, and I totally empathize with both groups. Because let's face it, on one hand, the mass bowler spam attack doesn't require a lot of planning. It's certainly not a two or three phase attack that requires, you know, really uh, intricate, knowledgeable bra base breakdown and planning to go in against a base. At the worst scenario against these anti three star bases, you're going to get two stars. Best case, you have a decent shot at three stars. Okay, so before I roll out what the problem is, I should mention a huge caveat to this entire discussion, and that is that bases are starting to change. You're starting to see a lot of changes in anti-three-star bases both at Town Hall 10 and Town Hall 11. Namely, they're starting to spread out the Inferno Towers more and even triangulate the Inferno Towers and the Eagle Artillery in three separate areas of the base. That way, the mass bowlers can't get at one of those targets targets just by simply spamming them and the same entry point on a map. So that's kind of the direction the anti three star bases are going. I can bring you some examples of those in the future if you want to. But as always, defense kind of lags behind offense. So whatever the offensive trend is, it does take a few weeks, a couple months maybe for bases to catch up to prevent these type of spam attacks. Same thing happened with witches, same thing happened with Valkyries, and it's now happening happening with bowlers. That's another reason that I don't think nerfing them is necessarily the correct move. Okay, finally, let's move on to what the problem is. And now on the next replay, you're going to start seeing it, right? So I love air attacks, and I think that air attacks in a perfect world scenario should make up about 50% of the attacks in the game. 
Now, is it ever going to equal exactly 50%? And let's face it, there's less air troops than there are ground troops. So maybe even 25% air attacks would be nice to see. Right now, we're seeing pretty much zero on the in the fair play community, right? So I'm not seeing too many Penta La Luna attacks in wars. Actually, I'm not seeing any Penta La Luna attacks against max bases like this, or not even like this, but against any kind, any type of decent anti three star base design. And I love these types of attacks. Now, these are attacks that require planning and execution in those intricate, uh, you know, elements that I talked about earlier. This is an attack with clone spell, and that's going to lead me to another point as well. But you can see these are really fun when done well, when planned out well, they can actually do, they can actually be successful. But the real problem is that the air attacks, let's just throw a number out there, an air attack will be a Penta La Luna at Town Hall 10, for example, or Town Hall 11, probably has what, maybe a... 50% chance of getting a 3 star at best, maybe 25% chance, maybe 33% chance, and even worse, if things go wrong in an air attack, you have a decent shot at only coming away with 1 star, whereas a bowler attack on the other hand, a mass bowler attack against a, this, a similar anti 3 star base, you're going to be a 2 star in that base at around a 75-85% to 85 clip, and you're going to be 3 starring that base at least 50% of the time if you have a general awareness of a, a decent mass bowler spam attack strategy. Maybe even northwards of 2 thirds of the time getting a 3 star attack. So that's the crux of my argument about what's wrong with bowlers, right? And, it, and it's kind of similar to what was wrong with Valkyries. They're so strong that they're keeping all the other awesome strategies down. And it's not just air attacks that I'm talking about here. It's actually even the usage of miners and the usage of the clone spell, right? These are two things that we're not seeing that much of. I mean, sure, people are using miners, but at this point, it seems like almost a novelty. They're certainly effective, don't get me wrong. Very effective troop. I love miners. I really do like them a lot, and I think they're appropriately powerful in terms terms of their their strength and usage but the same thing goes for miners that goes for uh the air attacks the penta la Lune, any kind of la Lune attack at town hall 10 or 11 they're just not as effective as bowlers so when you have one strategy that is so much more successful than all the other attack strategies out there it creates a vacuum where that one strategy dominates the game now is that a big issue that's the real question here so is that even a problem ash i mean Maybe there's always going to be one strategy that dominates the game. Isn't that how games go? Isn't there always one strategy that's kind of the best out there? I don't know. That might be true. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I'm not going to try to be so wonky to say that this is exactly how every strat every game needs to be in terms of balance. But in my perfect world scenario, I mean, they added the level 4 Lava Hounds. They added the level 7 Balloons. I was really excited about this. I thought for the first time in a long time, air would actually be a viable attack strategy again. But alas, <laughs> bowlers are so dominant that again, they're kind of overshadowed. Uh, air attacks. So what is the solution or at least what would my solution be? Well, it's a great question and it's a very tough answer. I'm sure you all have your own opinions on what it would be. Me personally, here's what I would do. I would not go ahead and nerf bowlers. Instead, I would just make a couple of slight buffs to other troops. Now, when I say slight buffs, I mean really slight, because let's face it, again, like I mentioned in the beginning of the episode, bases are changing right now. People are adjusting to the bowler attacks, so we don't want to overreact if we're supercell, but at the same time, we want to be cognizant of the fact that the bowlers are boxing out every other troop in the game. So my own recommendations to the Supercell team for Clash of Clans would be to go ahead and add a slight buff to the Witches. That way it gives another option for the ground game at Town Hall 11. And then I would go ahead and give a buff to level 6 and level 7 balloons, a slight buff that will uh, dramatically increase the viability of air. And then I would buff level 4 Lava Hounds as well. Again, a slight buff to the Hounds and maybe even the Pups. That way it brings air a little bit back in line with the bowler attacks and of course all offense will be a little bit stronger but it's easy to go ahead and add those defensive levels in the future if you want to further balance the game so guys interested to hear your thoughts on everything thank you so much for hanging out with me and as always take care guys we don't play for fame.